salary package? What are the companies that are available? Uh, do we have it in Chennai or do we have it in other locations? So there will be a lot of questions. So if you have to look into Chennai, the major hub for clinical research is absolutely Bangalore. Okay, Bangalore, we have more than 50 multinational companies. You have all heard about Biocon, right? Biocon, have you heard about Sinjin? Sinjin is? Is it coordinated with any company? Syngenius, whose company? Biocon. Yeah, Biocon. So Biocon is a concern is Synge. Do you have do you know any other company's name which is connected with Biocon? Icon. No, Icon is different. Icon is a separate multinational CR. It's not connected with Biocon. Biocon, Synge, Clinigy, anybody has heard? Clinigy. Clinigy. Okay, so why do they have it as Syngene and Clinigene? Both these companies are clinical trial based. If you go for Biocon for biotech R&D, the salary package would start from something like between, you know, it will be around uh, 8 to 10,000 for a biotech R&D candidate. And if you go for Syngene for a CRA position, it will start from 30 plus. It's 30 to 35,000 and that is the kind of salary package that is possible in Syngene and Clinigene. Why? Because clinical trial requires why do you think there is so much of emphasis for clinical research? From where is that cost coming? Sponsors. Funding from the government. No, it's not at all the funding from the government. Okay, government will not give for clinical trials. Pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies. From where does farm? Do you know normally from a pharmaceutical company? Pharmaceutical companies are money printing industry. You know that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it because. Who is fixing the drugs rate? What is an antibiotic cost? A pharmaceutical company uh, fixes. What is a pharmaceutical uh, company, you know, like a drug being uh, done? An antibiotic cost 200, 300 rupees, you know? And, in, and uh, you know, like you can take up an injection or something. Who takes this charge of the billing of uh, pharmaceutical drug? So the entire cost, so initially what was the pharmaceutical company spending on? In? Not in research. See, in, you take a pharmaceutical company, QA, QC, they will be paid less. R&D, not very big. R&D, very few people will be there. Only the top scientists will be there. It will be an R&D department. Pharmaceutical company, all the people will be paid very less. QA, QC or formulation R&D or packing, whatever you get into. It's going to be ready. It's going to be lesser. What was that one pack which was... Uh, normally a pharmaceutical student or I know licensed students normally where will they go in for higher package? Marketing. Okay. You know that marketing was the huge chunk. Pharmaceutical companies will pour money on pharmaceutical marketing because what the rep is representing, what the drug the doctor is writing that is equal to the billing of the market. So that is what is going to boost up the entire profit range of the pharmaceutical companies. So when such is the case, where will they spend the money? It will be into pharmaceutical marketing. Pharmaceutical marketing, what will you do if you bring in a new drug and that particular drug is going and getting marketed? If the doctor, you, have you seen those, uh, you know, representatives that used to, uh, you know, uh, there is so much, I was also, I also started my career as a pharmaceutical, you know, into business development. So I know how it works, the incentive structure. So the first thing, I am a basically a pharmaceutical student. And I, I think I have not given you an introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Alamilu Murli and uh, no, I completed my B Pharmacy almost around 15-16 uh, years back. I started my career as a pharmaceutical business development manager, worked for 3-4 years, then moved into Accenture into TV. So long back we knew that that was the instant stage, nascent stage of pharmacovigilance and CDM coming up into the market. I am talking about I completed in 2002 B Pharmacy. And then I moved into MBA, HR, I did, I was into both the process of uh, Accenture as well as into PV, into the HR equipment. And I found that every day walk-ins will happen in Accenture, if you are aware of. My maximum, even now, weekly three days walk-ins will be going on for pharmaceutical students and also for licensed students. The number of selections will be very less because people are not being trained. And they used to be, if at all people are being trained in clinical research, there was only one option, MSc clinical research, which will again take another two years. People will not be willing to invest for another two years into MSc clinical research. So there was a huge gap. And MSc clinical research used to cost 8 lakhs. People used to do, you know, like 5 lakhs or 8 lakhs, one year course and three year, two years course. And yet, do you think all the students are 
are clearly equipped for clearing the interviews and getting the right placements. No. There are a lot of people who finish MSc clinical research and still wait. They don't get the right job. And that, when such was the scenario, we felt like there was a huge gap between the market requirement. Market is having huge potential. Requirements are there. Students are having interest to move into a right industry. But the industry is also having openings. But there is no proper bridge between the students and the organization. If you can lift the students professionally, and in every way, it's not about the technical. I always tell people like it's not about just a technical train of clinical research that we do. Because just with clinic, we have a track record of more than 5,200 students in the last seven years. We have placed in MNCs. And the same place, we have conducted a number of campus interviews, including Icon, Accenture, <coughs> Indigy, Quint, and all these companies from Bangalore. They come here to our institute to take students. And the only thing they will ask is, what is that one aspect that you train students? Because it's not about the technical training. Technical training, I don't even enter into that segment because trainers take. There's a lot of, I know, gap from, you know, you will get it through in the course what we teach, from your attitude towards your work. Because we come from school, school we are completely judged and all these timings and strictness, everything is there. We move into college with an attitude of a free, it's, it's a free way. Nobody can question us. If somebody questions us, we will not allow them to question. And you feel that rebelliousness is one of the attribute of a college student. And with that, you go, what will be your first thing to enter in? You have a lot of things you have to bring in. And the attitude towards for a student, how you answer a HR, you will be very casual. Like you would be talking to a, a college professor, you will not have fear. We are not afraid of college professors. But what is the professional attitude with which you carry to the company? So there is so many inbuilt things that we create, including your confidence levels, including your, you know, your personality, what you have to get. All the colleges teach us. But is it to the level of the company's requirements? We get complete direct feedbacks from colleges. So we know exactly what they require. So all this has been trained and you know attributed with companies and most importantly, interviews. It's not about everybody gets through with the first interview or second interview. So you must need somebody who is a professional expertise who can be, back, be behind you to tell you this is that one aspect you have to correct. Maybe nothing as such, they would have gone late to the interview. And the HR would immediately reject, they would not even put you through. They will take the interview, you would have done perfectly well, but they will think you don't have an attitude towards timing. A stay on fin, and you will have no idea because from the college you are just raw from the thing. One opportunity missed is a lifetime missed. You don't know when the next opportunity will come. Already they need a lot of technical training. They need the certification. The market has so much of technical. What will you know about clinical data management? If they ask you about clinical data management, you will have no idea what it is. And they will ask you the internal expertise. And one small bridging of a certification or a... And the beauty is, all the engineering students know, if they finish BE, do they get a job? They don't get it. Every engineering student knows, from 12th standard itself, people who are into the, you know, all this, they are planning for engineering, they will go for what? What they will go for? What training? Not only aptitude, nobody goes for an aptitude training. They go for a computer training, right? Everybody knows they have to know one language. Whatever is the recent one, unless all the engineering students know that directly from college nobody will take. One certification is required, only then you will be strong in the technical knowledge, only then you can crack through an MNC. But for the engineer, for the life science students, we don't have such clarity. If this is the MC, because for them it is clear, clearly mentioned Java or R language or big data, whatever is coming, even non life, non engineering students will know. Even we will know that what is happening in an engineering thing, the next language has come. If you study that, you will be able to go. But for life science students, we don't have a clear clarity on what is the next thing that is going to take you towards a higher thing. And that exactly brought into this institute. And we had designed the entire course. It's not even like, you know, it's a fixed one. We have a lot of things that we keep adding day in and day out because we are exactly updating towards the company's requirements. So whatever is the requirements of the company, say like you've been trained and this particular interview has a different specialization of, I've given you an overall description, there are three designations, but there are a lot of internal designations that is available. For each company, each profile will change, each project lead will change. They have a different requirement. So we have a direct contact with all the client companies where we get the entire records of what exactly they require. And that has resulted in this, you know, humongous number of, see, you, you, can, you can have various set of colleges, 
people have come through various places and if you can see the records we have it's not a chennai presence we have an all india presence including bangalore uh, hyderabad we have people from mumbai who are taking online classes only for this one reason because of the placement records any college anything any university you can take we have huge number of placement credentials from each college so obviously they know that somebody who is expertized in getting you a proper professional training who can support you for the placements also that is what is your requirement. Your, because one person will think like, say like one person told, I want to be into a pharmaceutical industry. So that would re result in a drug regulatory phase. You can move into a day. Okay, pharmaceutical company. In that, what is the best? Can we add on where you can go for a higher package? That will start from 25,000 salary. Will you go for that or QAQC? Our colleges or your seniors or the people around you have told you certain scripts. That's what we tell. No, the society has given you one script. You carry that script and keep writing your own story. It's not that. Are you ready enough to upgrade yourself to know what is exactly there in the market? Are we open enough to open opportunities of pouring, literally pouring out? And if we are smart enough to grab, we become successful. That is the exact. So that is this entire reason why we have this institution. And I just want to have the next person will be giving another shot of a technical part.